Hi, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to this session, this session, Opening Pandora's, Pandora's Box, a conversation about spirituality and higher education. My name is Kawami, um, newly appointed Dr. Kawami. Um, <laughs> that's exciting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I have a, a confession. When I first filled out the proposal for this session, I had about six learning outcomes. And when I received the email stating that this was approved um, and that I had 20 minutes um, to do this presentation, all of my six learning outcomes were dwindled down basically into one. So basically what I'm hoping that we can do is that just basically have a conversation about this topic around spirituality. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I came to be invested in this topic. I'm gonna talk about, provide at least a little bit of a definition of spirituality because the term itself is very subjective and has lots of different um, meanings for different people. So in order for us to have a conversation, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. And then I'm also going to directly draw connections between student affairs work, specifically the profession, and spirituality. And then we're gonna open it up and have conversation. So I have charged myself with making sure that I do not go beyond eight minutes of talking. So that leaves you all, or all of us, 12 minutes to have good, fruitful, dynamic conversation. So do I have someone who would be willing to keep me on track with time? Because they say once I get the microphone, lots of things are liable to happen. So uh, thank you, Nefertiri, for, for doing that. So first of all, when we were listening to the keynote speaker, Janet, this morning, Dr. Janet, I was so excited that I was nearly coming undone because she started to talk a lot about a lot of the essence around student affairs work and some of the aspects of student affairs work that I think sometimes goes unnoticed and untalked about. She brought up things like meaning making. She brought up things like purpose. At one point, she even made reference to a phrase of creating purposeful opportunities for students to fail. And of course, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know we're at UC Davis? <laughs> you know our students do not like to fail? But these are things that I think are really important and directly connect to this topic around, around spirituality. So let me tell you a little bit about how I got invested in this topic. At the age of 23, I stood at this junction where I needed to determine what it was that I was gonna do with my professional career. On the one hand, I could choose to continue to be an elementary school teacher in the university, well, in Massachusetts and Amherst area, which was fantastic. I worked with a lot of students from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, and the students were brilliant, worked in a fantastic school system or I could choose to pursue higher education, and specifically student affairs. And this was really a dilemma for me because I had a lot of likes and challenges in both. But let me tell you why I chose student affairs. I specifically chose student affairs for some of the reasons that Janet talked about earlier. That was my heart song. Number one, working with students between the age of 17 and 20 who are excited, and hopeful and energetic and really want to create change in the world was very attractive for me. To be able to partner with an institution of higher education and help to supplement some of the academic curriculum that's happening in the classroom with some of the personal development outside of the classroom, that really spoke to me. And for me to know that I had the opportunity to really create a unique imprint on the lives of students in ways that I thought were important and critical in our world today was the things that, that really sold me. So once I really started to sit down and, and dig deep into why I wanted to do this kind of work, those were the things that really stood out for me. So here I am, 15 years later as a student affairs professional. The other thing is that I need to out myself. I consider myself to be a highly spiritual person, highly spiritual. So anything that I do, I infuse my spiritual understandings, my wisdom, um, my experiences into that. 
I bring my full self to my work. That's both my head and my heart in everything that I do. And for me, making the choice to do that, specifically with student affairs work, was also really important. So as you all know, this idea around spirituality, it's complicated. It's not easy. And part of the reason why it is complicated is because spirituality does not have a specific um, definition, particularly in higher education. It's a very subjective term. So to get us on the same page, even in, the terms of, in terms of the type of conversation that we can have, I chose this definition, which is by Dalton. And essentially what Dalton is, is talking about is he's talking about um, the opportunity to connect with other people and really discovering our place in the world. Our connection to not only other people, but this larger dynamic of life. And then also I couple this idea of spirituality with addressing these big questions. Susan Parks, who is a fantastic um, author and theorist, she came up with these big questions. And she said that these big questions are questions that all students at some point are asking themselves. And I would even venture to guess that all of us as professional staff constantly ask ourselves these very same questions. Interesting enough, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it much, but there is a direct correlation. So some of the, the questions that students are asking is, who am I? What are some of the unique gifts that I bring to not only my professional career and to this environment, but how is it that what I do, what I believe in, what I have to offer, how is it going to make a difference in the world? How do I know that I'm living a life that feels purposeful, that feels like it's going to be impactful? So when we're talking about spirituality, these are the types of things that we're talking about. I think it's important to note that these definitions create a space for not only people who are religiously affiliated with some kind of religion as their form of spirituality, but this also creates an invitation for those who have a secular or a humanistic um, approach to some of these questions or how they connect to life. So I think that that's really important to establish in terms of this definition. So, so how does spirituality connect to, two minutes? My Lord. Um, <laughs> thank you. So how does spirituality connect to student affairs work? Number one, student affairs as a profession was established in part based upon the student personnel point of view, which is a document that was actually created back in 1937. And that document highlighted four things. And we do a fantastic job, fantastic job with the social, emotional, and intellectual pieces of development for our students, especially outside of the classroom. But the research indicates very clearly that we are not doing well when it comes to the spiritual aspect of students' lives. In fact, it is the one aspect in which we often purposefully um, neglect. So there's a lot of research out there, exciting, exciting research that talks about the fact that we can no longer afford to ignore this aspect of students' lives. So number one, Student development theory, Chickering, he is one of the most popular student development theorists that we tend to use. His seven vectors of the seven that he created, which is something that Janet also referred to earlier, three of them pertain to spirituality, meaning, purpose, and integrity. This place to be able to live the thing that feels most authentic, real, and right for you. And then there's also the um, Higher Education Research Institute that did this groundbreaking study. And basically the short of it is, is that this study was done in 2003. And what Aston and Aston did, who are student development theorists as well, what they did is they surveyed 112,000 students over a seven year period through various um, institutions in the United States. And what they came up with in terms of their findings was a number of mind-blowing things. And some of them that are important for purposes of this presentation are, number one, a number of students identify more as spiritual rather than religious. Number two, students have expectations. They wanna talk about purpose and meaning. They wanna talk about what their life means. They wanna talk about how is it that they can uniquely make a difference in the world. And then number three, the other thing that they talked about is, is that when students are engaged spiritually, that that has profound impacts as to how they 
see themselves as students, how they engage with professional staff as well as faculty, and how they connect to the work and the ways in which they show up at the campus in which they are currently at. That is really, really significant. So I'm going to skip this slide just for the purpose of, of time. But some of the other things that when we engage students spiritually, thank you, when we engage students spiritually, here's some of the things that positively get impacted that has been substantiated by the data. Number one, students are able to engage in leadership opportunities um, at higher levels because they are able to access some of their leadership qualities in real unique ways. Number two, the psychological well-being. When you are able to establish a certain kind of value system, belief system, as to um, what are your core foundations, that helps to support students, particularly in difficult times. And I know that that is a hot topic on this campus right now. Number, two, number three, intellectual self-esteem. Just because things get difficult doesn't mean that you can't do it. And I know a lot of us in our roles, we're constantly trying to support students and give them words of encouragement. But when students have their own sense of value and belief, there's ways in which their intellectual self-esteem gets supported by their spiritual knowing. Number two, their academic performance tends to increase. Um, again, I mentioned the satisfaction with college. And then also, to a commitment to diversity. And I just want to say a quick thing right now. There is dynamic research out there that talks about, number one, sacred activism. They talk about the connection between spirituality and diversity and slash social justice work. And not only the ability to be clear about the values and principles of that, but how is it that we continue to sustain ourselves in those practices um, long term based upon your own spiritual foundations and understandings? How is it that we're accessing some of those things? So I know that that's quick. Um, Nefertiri gave me my cue about two minutes ago. Um, but this is a place where I want to start to have some conversation about this. Um, because I want to know, number one, you know, what are some of your initial responses about what I've talked about? And specifically, the direct correlation between spirituality and our work. Our work as student affairs professionals here at this institution. So I'm wondering if anyone has any like initial responses of what you'd like to say? Yes, Valerie. Thank you. And, and I think part of, part of the, the important thing around this is, is that, of course, this topic of spirituality is huge and lots of conversations are happening around it. But I think that part of my goal is, is to ensure that 
our students, when they leave here four or five years later, that they're just one step closer to understanding who am I? Because you're right, there are so many things in their world, especially when they get here. We do a good job at that, making them second guess what they think they know, you know, when they come here. But what we don't do is we don't give them tools to help them reconfigure or relearn what is it that they do know? What is the thing about themselves that doesn't move? Because everything does not move. There's lots of things that move, but some things don't. And I think that we could do a much better job of helping our students to create internal systems and values that they can hold tight to while everything else is moving. So I really appreciate that. Other initial responses to this information? Yes. Thank you, and, and yes, <laughs> very true. And that, and that becomes also part of, I think the beauty of it is, is that my last slide on here says, be the change that you wish to see. So that which it is that we're asking and calling forth of our students, we have an absolute obligation, not just a responsibility because we get a paycheck, but we have an absolute responsibility to be able to demonstrate and role model that which it is that we're asking them to do. And just on a personal note, I think that our students, and there's, you know, adult, adulthood theory that supports this, but I think our students look around our world and I think a number of them are just concerned, they're fearful, they have ambition, they have drive, they have energy, but they're like, where do I put it in this chaotic mass called the world? And I think, I'm serious, and I think that they're looking for people and looking for role models that know how to stay close to certain things that you know while still pursuing your dreams, while still creating this sense of transformation in the world while making a difference. They're looking for those role models. And to be quite honest, I look for them too. And unfortunately, I don't see a lot of them. I, do, I see some every now and again, but people who know what they know and can really stick close to that, um, I, I think it's, it's an order that's before us. So other, other initial thoughts? Can you? I think that that's, I'm gonna to get to your question in just a second, both of you. And as we continue to have conversation, I also want us to start to be thinking about, you know, what are some of these things at UC Davis, particularly our culture, particularly our practices, um, that may support or encourage or discourage this spiritual development, this spiritual exploration. Um, let's, let's make sure that we're thinking about that as well. I, I saw your hand and then we'll go here. Speak up a little bit louder. I see milk. Okay.
Thank you. I have a question. I asked this question. I come to the conference on time. I know that people like to come in every week and drag me into the show way late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am mindful of time. And I'll tell you, this was the hardest, hardest charge was to do this in 20 minutes. I saw two. I want to get the comments that I saw two hands and then we'll um, and then we'll wrap up. Yes, Peter and then Vicki. Can you a little bit louder, Peter? Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And Vicki? Absolutely. Thank you so much. So I plan to continue to have these conversations. I have my business cards. I would love to gather with other professionals who are just passionate about this, this topic and really using this as a tool to better service our students and also to, quite frankly, to better service ourselves and support one another. So again, I want to thank you all so much for coming. This is just the appetizer. Hopefully more to come. Thank you.